And we weren't there in Jesus' time when everything was going on. We yes. weren't there. We didn't see any of it. Yes. But one of these days, when they crown him King of Kings and Lord of Lords, we're going to be there. Amen.
different departments of Sunday school and uh, preached on Sunday morning, Sunday night. And we want to pray in behalf of Chris for his dad. He's depending on us to touch God for his dad's behalf. And let's believe God to touch him. Would you just reach your hand this way and let's pray for Chris Tarvin's dad. Father, God, I pray for his dad, Chris Tarvin's dad, right now. Father, that this liver begin to work, whatever it is, destroy the liver. God, in Jesus' name, that the liver be healed and begin to function the way it should. That the transplant would be necessary, would be needed. Dear Father, make him whole. Do a miracle. Do a miracle in his body. A creative miracle. Make him whole and a bit. And give you glory. Praise him up. To give you all the glory, all the praise. And Father, we ask you for giving him a new liver. And I praise you and bless you. For all things are possible with you. We believe you for the impossible. And we believe you by faith. In Jesus' name. Hey, man, 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 praise God. Hallelujah. Fire, come up and sing the praises of the Lord. Let the Lord use you. The drama team, excuse me. Drama team. God bless you. God bless you. You need to say. Um, I wanted to give you guys a little insight on this before we perform it while everybody's getting dressed. God gave me this in a time when I was being oppressed by a spirit of fear. And He allowed me to see a glimpse into the spiritual realm. And I hope that's what this will do for you. You know, when we rebuke these demons, they don't always leave. Sometimes they come back. You know, we overcome the spirit of fear, but we might have a spirit of doubt. We overcome that spirit, they might try to attack us with the spirit of deception. Um, and you have to keep overcoming. You cannot quit. And I'm going to tell you, you're not alone. God gave you the authority to overcome these spirits. But while you're praying and while you're interceding, there are angels fighting for you that you can't even see. And I know that there are some of you that have bondage and have chains on them, and you just, you know, it doesn't mean that you're not saved. It just means that Satan's got you tied down. You're not free. And I'm telling you, freedom is right in front of you, and it's the greatest feeling. And, um... You know, uh, you can intercede for your family. It, your fa you know, claim them. Say, Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. You can't have my mom, my dad, my son, my daughter. You know, I claim them for Jesus Christ. And you can do that. God gave you authority over powers of darkness to command them to leave. And they have to go. And in Jesus' name, you're not alone. You have angels fighting for you when you can't even see them. <laughs> And I hope that this will touch you. And I want to say something else. If, you know, if anybody needs freedom tonight, it's up here. Come get it. We'll pray with you. We'll pray through. It doesn't matter if we're in the middle of this drama. You know, interrupt us. It'll be okay.
Yeah. That we've got to reach for Jesus. Amen. Yeah. yeah. Right now, over the web, over the internet, we're reaching more people about ten times more people than what we have in the service. Ten times. And I praise God for that. I want to reach millions of people yes. through the internet. I want them to hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ through the internet. Not only America, America needs to receive the word of God. Yes. Yes. America is a bankrupt, spiritually bankrupt nation. Yes. Now, I'm going to get into the word of God in just a few moments, but I've got to tell you, we've got a big task at hand to win souls to God here on our own soul. Yes. To reach them for Jesus. All the way from the the White House to the Poor House. Amen. Amen. And all in between. Yes. We need to win souls to Jesus. We Amen. need godly congressmen and senators and legislators. We need a, a saved president, vice president, and cabinet. Amen. 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 We need a godly leadership throughout the whole works of the, of the United States of America and in every country around the world. We need godly Christian leaders. Amen. 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 I'm going to get a little bit... They'll probably want to edit this out, but please don't. Those of you that are Muslim watching us today, if there's anyone in this church that's Muslim, I want you to understand your God that you're following wants to kill Christians and anybody that doesn't believe like you do. And I want you to hear about Yeshua, Jehovah, our God that we serve, the God of this Bible, loves and does not hate people. God loves you. God loves Christians, He loves sinners, He loves Muslims, and everything else you can imagine. Every religious people, God loves you. He doesn't want to send someone to kill you like Muslims do, like the Mohammedism does. But God's Word teaches us, love one another. He said to love one another. Amen. As God loves us, we're to love each other. Not kill people and not hurt people. Not cut them down and mow them down. Not cut their heads off. But love them to Jesus. I just got to tell you about Jehovah God that loves you more than you love yourself. Amen. And I want to bless you as you come to Jesus and learn of Him. Yes. If you don't know about Jesus, let me tell you briefly. He was born of the Virgin Mary. Yeah. He was raised up and He grew up to be 30 years old. And he started his ministry at 30 years old. As Jesus began his ministry, he chose 12 disciples, people to follow him. And as he chose those 12 disciples, he chose them to train them and teach them, love them, to save them, and to send them forth to win other people to Jesus and to love them. Jesus was crucified on the cross of Calvary at the age of 33 years old. At the age of 33, Jesus was crucified, buried in a borrowed tomb. The third day, He didn't stay there. His body is not there in that tomb. You can check it out yourself. History records it and proves it, along with the Bible, that the third day Jesus was resurrected from the grave. He's the only one in this world, the only one in history, that was risen from the dead. One that came to be God. The only one that He is God. Amen. Was crucified, dead, buried, and He rose from the dead. His bones are not there, but He's resurrected on the dead hell of the grave. And He's now at the right hand of the Father. Amen. And He's treated for you. And you can be saved by the same Jesus. Amen. Yeah. And He wants you yeah, to come to Him. Right. Hallelujah. And I pray and believe in God that this will go to Muslim countries, Islamic people that need Jesus, don't believe in Jesus, that's taught to hate Jesus and followers of Jesus. And I want to tell you, I don't hate anybody. Christians, we don't hate anybody. We don't want to kill anybody. We don't want to hurt people. 
But Jesus loves you no matter what religious persuasion you're with and follow. And He wants you to follow Him. Amen. And receive Him to save your Lord of your life. Amen. Praise God. I know you said, well, why did you do that? I felt the divine unction from the Lord, the Holy One. God is going to send this in the specific homes and countries where people will tune in and watch this and receive Jesus as their personal Savior. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I met a man in Orlando, Florida. I shared with you. He had was been, was raised a, a, a Muslim and he heard about Jesus. I shared with you about Sister Margaret Gaines Church. She began over 50 years ago <coughs> in Israel. This young man has an influence of that church, accepted Jesus Christ. His family forsook him, did, disowned him. And this brother in the Lord, somehow God put him right beside me walking down the corner at the General Assembly. And I got to talk to him and he told me uh, a little bit of his history. And while we're walking side by side, I could sense the camaraderie, the same spirit that I have was in him, the same spirit in him was in me. He had to knew the same Jesus that I knew. And the same Jesus that I know, He knows. There's a spirit that you can sense and know. And this good brother testified how that Jesus saved him and sanctified him and filled him with the Holy Ghost. And first of all, He took the veil off of his eyes so he could see Jesus and see Him clearly. And he realized that Muhammad was not the true God. That Jesus Christ, Yeshua, is the true and living Son of God that we bow down to and worship. For someday, every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and the Lord of God the Father. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Everybody. I don't care who it is. Those who claim to be God. Yes. There was a man who claimed to be God who lived in New York City. His name was Father Divine. He had power. Not with God, but demonic power. Amen. I heard Brother Tino Lowry, a noted Christian authority and evangelist, worldwide evangelist. I heard him say it took everything within him to keep from bowing down to that Father divine. <laughs> He's a man powerful. God anoints him. People have been healed and set free all kinds of diseases and sicknesses. And multitudes saying, saying about filled with the Holy Ghost, many people, just maybe a congregation, a whole congregation, will be slain in the Spirit all at one time. Amen. And he walked with God and fast 40 days at a time. But he said he was up there in New York in the, in the presence when Father Divine walked by. He said, It took every ounce of strength and power that I had to keep from bowing down to Father Divine. Jesus. You see, the devil. He may have some power, but he's not at all powerful. And no matter what the devil throws at you, Jesus is more powerful than whatever the devil throws at you. You are a victorious vessel. And I'm going to get into this message. Let me give you the word. I'm going to go with you to Exodus 34, 29, and 30. Repeating some things we've been preaching on came to pass when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tables of testimony in Moses' hand when he came down from the mountain that Moses did not realize that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. And when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone and they were afraid to come nigh. Yes. Now, KJV does not do this scripture justice. No. Does not do these Hebrew words justice. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, it does it a great injustice in the KJV because it doesn't really portray the actual Hebrew word right. where it says it's shown. When you go back to the original Hebrew, it says it was like rays going out from his face. Yes. And if I have time, I'm going to get over in the New Testament where Jesus was on the transfigured. Place of transfiguration, man of transfiguration. If we have time, we want to get over there. But it was like, almost like 
darts or rays that came out so bright. Yeah. They didn't see the face of God, but they saw one who had seen and been in the presence of God 40 days and 40 nights without interruption, without a phone call. No cell phone rang. No doorbells rang. Just God and Moses on the mountain. And there was so much power on Moses. My great God, you can't be in the presence of God without the power of God. Get no new so much that you've got to go. Something's got to change about you. You won't be the same. You won't look the same. He'll cause you to be revitalized. When the power of God touches you, some people are afraid to be in the presence of God. They want to go to a dead, dry church where there's a, like I told you about, an icicle in the pew and, and ice cubes in the, in the pews and an icicle in the pulpit because they don't want any more. They just want to be pacified. I guess they'd be more satisfied if they passed out pacifiers. Amen. <laughs> I don't have time to send out pacifiers here. I want to give you the gospel straight. Hey, Come hey, down straight in. Hey, I God sure and sure as the word of God says it to let you know that God is more powerful than you can imagine. Oh, to be in his presence. Hey, hey, to be in the midst of the Lord hey, God Almighty. To realize it when you hey, there where he is. Hey, no wonder God told him. He hey, said, Moses, hey, take off your shoes for the ground you're on is holy ground. No hey, wonder. He didn't want anything to be between his body Amen. and God's presence. Amen. 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 Nothing is to be between you and God's presence. Amen. I'm going to make somebody mad here. No Alabama Auburn football game. Amen. I'm putting up a shield of faith to find out the fiery darts. <laughs> Amen. Too many people. Amen. Let Alabama Auburn football game be their God because it's more important than going to church. Yeah. If it's on a Sunday. Yeah. You say you want more power with God, you better let loose the things the world. It's not wrong to go to the world games and watch them on TV, yeah. but it's wrong to put Don't you dare say that you want all God has for you. Amen. Then you stay out of church to watch some program or something on TV. That's right. You don't want all of God. You just want what's convenient for you to get. But when you really want all God's got for you, you don't put any stipulations on it. Amen. You let God know you want more power of God. You want to be in His presence. Oh my! What's Amen. happening is not enough to be in the presence of God to start with. But if you're ever in His presence, Amen. you've got to know that there's nothing like it to compare with the Amen. glory Amen. and the presence and the power of Almighty God. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, He does something to you. He exposes you. Yes, it does. Amen. He exposes things to the flesh. Yeah. If there's any any kind of shortness, anything to do with the flesh and carnality, He exposes it in your life. And if you want to do something about it, you'll get closer to Him. Yeah. And if you don't want to do something about it, you'll run from it. Yeah. Yeah. Some people are afraid to come to church here. <laughs> because the Holy Ghost exposes their sin in their life. Amen. And they're afraid that their sin will be exposed and they'll have to do something about their sin That's and right. the carnality in their Amen. life. Right. Amen. Amen. Praise God. The rays in the original Hebrew setting comes from the word Quran, K, excuse me, Q-A-R-A-N. In the Hebrew, it means to push, to shoot out horns, to send out rays. That's, a, that's the appearance. It was of Moses when he come down from the mount yeah. after being in the presence of Almighty God. Uh -huh. wow, he said, Preacher, 
You blaspheme saying something against the KJV. The KJV didn't come from God. It's the 14th translation from the original manuscripts. Amen. Take that and put it in your cake. Amen. The presence of God came down in the Shekinah glory. Yeah. Such in such a way that Moses was in God's awesome presence. I've got a prayer I'm praying for you that God will expose His awesome presence to you to a certain degree that you can handle it and you can stand Amen. it. Amen. Because none of us could stand all the glory of God's presence in this fleshly tabernacle that we're in. Amen. So God has ways of letting certain portions and degrees of His, His uh, existence be revealed to us, His glory revealed to Amen. us, so that we can handle as much as He sends our way. There's a prayer I'm praying for all of us that we realize, that we comprehend this thing in our cranium called a brain. We comprehend with our brain, with our spirit and our soul and our being. And I preached it over and over and over and over. And some of you, it's redundant to you hearing it so much. But I've got to preach it over and over until you get it. When you get it, I can go on to something else. Right. You, as the holy children of God, chosen of God, have the Spirit of Christ in you, else you're not of His. Yes. Yeah, amen. And I'm saying it again, you are also, not only have Him in you, you are in Him. I'm yes. saying it over amen. and over and over. That's right. You're in Him. Yes, in Jesus' name. My great God. Some of you are getting it. He's in you and you're in Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Moses called out to them. His face was radiating. Beams were coming off of his face. It was more bright than any wattage that you could imagine. You could imagine a million watts, but according to in the New Testament, I, I refer to that. I'm trying, I'll try to get over there. But according to the New Testament, his face shone and his, his apparel glistened like the sun. You imagine being that close to the sun, S-U-N, and the sun, S-O-N. The sun is so bright that you can't keep looking at it and still keep your vision. You'll go blind if you look at the sun. Too long, it'll burn your your eyes, your pupils, and your iris, the cornea. Moses called out to them in verse 31 and 32. And Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned to him, and Moses talked with them. And afterward, the children of Israel came nigh and he gave them in commandment. And the New King James Virgin said that he gave them as commandments. All that the Lord had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. And the next verses 3, 33 and 35 said, Till Moses had done speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. Mm. And you're saying, well, preacher, don't you remember you preached that already? Yes, I do remember. But I've got to say it over and over again until you get it. Please get it. Amen. Put a veil on his face. But when Moses went in before the Lord, the veil was removed. He took the veil off. Until he came out, he came out and spake to the children of Israel that he was commanded. And the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone. And, and Moses put the veil upon his face again until he went in to speak to God. Moses didn't realize his face was glowing. His face was shining. Hallelujah. I can see another dimension picture. 
I can see a teenage boy praying in one of the Sunday school rooms in Alabama City Church of God. I see him there and he's got the lights off. And I see him as an angel walks in the room and illuminates the whole room. No lights were turned on, but the glory of God illuminated that room. I could feel I was that boy. I could feel the radiance of God's presence. I could feel and sense. And I could open my eyes. I didn't even, didn't even have to open my eyes. I could see the glory of the Lord filling that room. Yeah. It was touching on me. Amen. And I felt that glory touching me. Yeah. I'm here to tell you, you can get along with God and Amen. touch Him and He can touch you and He'll change you. Amen. Yeah. You can't remain the same Amen. in the presence of Almighty God. Yeah. You cannot stay as you were. You can't stay, stay and remain the same old, same old. Because when you're in the presence of Almighty God, you've got to change. Amen, that's right. Oh, wow, this is wonderful. Amen. 2 Corinthians 3, verses 12 and 13. Seeing then that we have such great Amen. hope, we have such hope, we use plainness of speech and not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. The reason the Old Testament, well, actually, the New Testament excels the Old is that the old is only for a certain time and a certain place, Palestine, is for a certain people, the Jews. The new covenant is for all time, for all lands, and for all people. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians 3, 14 through 16. But their minds were blinded, for until this day remaineth the veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil was done away in Christ. Amen. But even to this day when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. It's not upon Moses. It's upon them. Not because of the glory shining from them. But it veils them from the truth. They didn't want to see the glory in the Old Testament. The Jews didn't. Don't be offended at the Jews. Hear what the Spirit says. The veil can be taken away from you, for that veil is done away in Christ Jesus. Yeshua. When Moses read the veils upon the heart, nevertheless, when it when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Amen. God wants His people. He wants the Jews, the Hebrews. He wants His people of all nationalities to receive the truth of the Gospel. Yeah. I've known Jews, Hebrews, that have accepted Jesus as their personal Savior. I had a Jew for Jesus in the church I pastored in Louisiana to come and show a video. And he told how there was, was more Jews at that time in New York City than there was in Israel. And how that he had turned to the Lord and given his heart to Jesus. You see, the veil was taken away from him and he could see. It's possible for them to see. But yet the glory of God wants to shine to them. Amen. And they can't see as long as they do not receive Jesus Christ as Savior. Amen. The law was veiled in types and shadows and things to come. They didn't see things to come because a veil was upon their eyes, upon their heart. The God, God of all creation, sent the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news of Jesus. It has all practicality and no ceremonies compared to the Old Testament. The only thing that we have in the New Testament, as far as a, a ceremony, is the Lord's Supper and water baptism. Amen. Amen. I hope that lost you. I love this. We're changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord in Hebrews 10, 1 and 2. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things 
the law having a shadow of good things to come. A shadow of good things to come. <clears throat> and not the very image of things can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers of their unto perfect. Those ceremonies and those offerings could never make us perfect. <laughs> we needed Jesus. We needed a Savior. We needed a perfect sacrifice. The animals were not perfect sacrifices. They were just a substitute, ceremonial. But when Jesus came, He was a perfect sacrifice. He's the only sacrifice, perfect sacrifice without sin. Jesus was and is and always will be without sin. Amen. I could get on the soapbox here, but I don't, I'm not going to take the time. For those of you that follow certain preachers on TV that are deceivers, some of you may even send them money. I wouldn't advise it because you're sowing your seed into bad ground. And God will not bless seed that's sown on bad ground. Amen. Amen. I preached it over and over, but some of you may not have heard it. There are those preachers on television <laughs> that will tell you that Jesus died and went to hell and was punished for His sin in hell three days and nights, that He was tortured by the demons of darkness. Can you believe people support people like that? Church people do around the world. They send them millions of dollars and support that doctrine of devils. Now their Jesus may have, I have to say this, their Jesus may have, but my Jesus, yeah. your Jesus, yeah. all God's people Jesus, was born to the Virgin Mary. Yes. Pure, holy, undefiled, yeah. and no sin. Neither was any sin found in Him. Yeah. He was without sin. Yeah. He was the only one yeah. because He was yeah. without sin that He went to a, a devil's hell, preached to into the people down on the earth. He preached to those under the earth the good news and gospel. He told them about what He had done. He's the Son of God. He went and preached to the spirits under the earth. And not only did He preach to them three days, in the third day, He came for the victorious over death, hell, the grave, the devil, power of Jesus. How do you know, preacher? Go with me to Jerusalem. Oh, I would have loved to see this. Brother Sparkman, I'd love to see it with those they came up out of the grave. And they were walking about Jerusalem. Those that had been dead. But they got up with Jesus. Jesus said, can you imagine the trail following Him and the, the parade following Him out of hell? Out of the underworld? My! Abraham! Isaac! Jacob! There you are, following after Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. They were seen on the streets of Jerusalem. Yes. Yes. That they've been dead. Yes. <laughs> but they're alive forevermore. Oh. And they went up to heaven with Jesus. Oh. And he emptied out Abraham's bosom. Yes, he did. Yeah. It was under the earth. But he emptied out Abraham's bosom because hell needed some more room. That's right. Oh. Oh. No more would a righteous or a Christian. Go to that place under the earth called Abraham's bosom. He emptied it out, took them to heaven, got a place for them there, and no more after a soul dies, after a person dies, their soul goes to heaven with God to await the, the rapture. And when the rapture takes place, their, their body will be raptured out of the earth. Their soul will reunite out of their body. You say, well, why do they need to do that? Don't ask me, ask God. Yes. He's got the answer. Yes, he does. I don't figure he needed to consult with me or anybody else to do what he wants to do because he is God. Amen. He's going to unite the soul and body together. And that soul and body is going out with Jesus in the clouds of glory. And it says, so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. Amen. My Jesus, your Jesus, yes. had no sin. 
He was not tormented. He was a preaching. Can you imagine? Jesus was a preaching machine. He was preaching in Abraham's bosom three days and nights. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let me get on here. The law had a shadow of good things to come. You see, it was not the very image of things, but it was a shadow of things. Shadow of things. You can dwell in the secret place of the Most High. The secret place of the Most High God. You can abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You can. This is not some fantasy story. You can live in the presence of Almighty God. Yes. Go with me now. In the Holy Writ. In Psalm 91 verses 1 and 2. He that continually dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Hallelujah. I love that. I could preach a script there. Just that little scripture there. He said, He that dwelleth, and that means to continually dwell in the secret place of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Oh my. Hallelujah. Can you imagine? He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Whatever is under Him is glorified. The power of God is so strong. My, sometimes He moves in here so much. Amen. So much. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. So much. Yeah. That the power of God is so real, it's hard to stand yeah. up and sit down. It's hard to kneel. It's hard to be yeah. on the yeah. face before Him because the glory of the Lord yeah. is so strong. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. I'm not preaching something that's foreign to you because you've experienced God's presence in that manner. He that dwells. It's, it's said that Psalm 90 and 91 was written by Moses. Moses. 40 years, beginning the 40 years in the wilderness. Psalm 90 and 91. The wonders of which the, the, the subject of the fourth book of Psalms. And to realize that 91 was written to comfort the church in the wilderness while they were going through their trials and difficulties and, and their tempting times. To, to lead the church in the wilderness and to understand if, if Moses wrote Psalm 91 then all the scripture quoted by our Lord Jesus while he was in temptation even those quoted by Satan were from the writings of Moses yeah hallelujah that's rich when he says he that dwelt oh my god Quit before midnight. <laughs> he that dwelleth. That means to sit. It comes from the a Greek, a Hebrew word, Y-A-S-H-A-B. It means to sit down. It means to dwell, to remain, to settle in the center, taking up a homestead, or staking out a claim and resisting all claim jumpers, to possess a place and live therein. That's right. He that dwelleth in the secret place. Right. He that sets out a, sets, stakes a claim in the secret place, dwelleth there. Set out, stake out your claim. Say, nobody can be a claim jumper. Nobody can move me out of this place. Yeah. Nobody can make me move out of this place because when you're in the holy place with God, nothing and nobody, no power, no power upon this earth, or yeah. beneath this world, no principality and power is powerful enough to move you out of your place. Yeah, amen. Amen, amen. Now that's great. I love that. That secret place comes from the Hebrew word C E T H E R. It's a covering or a hiding place. <clears throat> the shadow of the Almighty. That's a special place with God under His shadow, under His defense, under His protection. 
that means nothing can get at you but what God allows. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. To live in God's presence, we've got to desire Him like Moses desired Him. With our existence, our, all of our total being, our total existence, completely, totally given to God, not resisting or holding back anything, our pocketbook being God's, you could hear a pin drop. <laughs> Most people, even Christians, their God is in their pocket. Yeah, you're right. Amen. Because you get to preaching on that and some people say, well, that preacher's meddling now. <laughs> Did you know there's more mentioned about finance in the Bible than there is salvation or anything else? I think that's one of the biggest things. It's one of the biggest things that's got a hold of people. Those that's got it are afraid somebody will get it. Yeah. And those that, those that don't have it want it so much or willing to do, do most anything to get it. Happy to Jesus, get on something else. <laughs> you got to love God more than life itself. That's right. You gotta love God more. Yeah. I want you to catch this. Yes. You got a glove, you know, like a baseball glove to, to catch with. Because it may be a little hard when it hits, so you're gonna need your glove. Yes, So I'm gonna throw this and I want you to catch it, every one of you. You gotta love God more than anything about you. Yes. Yeah. 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 More than your selfish self. More than your selfish desires. More than what your flesh wants. You gotta love him so much. Now I'm talking about those of you that really want to get in with God. I mean really want to get in with him. Just about a handful of people only care about really getting that close to God. Because they're not willing to sacrifice their self. And their indulgence is the carnality. But I believe there is a people here that's hearing this message that I have never seen before. I've never seen a people like you. You're different. I didn't say how you're different. I just said you're different. <laughs> but you're different in a good way. I want you to hear this. Please hear this. Hear what the Spirit is saying to this church. You are hearing this message, this word, that if you will apply the principle of this word, there is no, nothing that can hinder you from getting where you want to be with God. Amen. Amen. You can get as close to Him as you desire to be. There's things I've shared with you. It's wonderful. I, I don't want to preach about myself and my personal experiences. I just want to share with you things that, that God will do for you because you've got to get in a place with God where He can do things for you. God is going to raise you up and He's going to do something to you. Amen. He's going to make you uncomfortable. He's going to make you uncomfortable. <laughs> oh, but I want to feel those Holy Ghost goosebumps. I want to feel that. And I do too. I love that. But let me tell you something. That don't save souls. That's right. Amen. I love it more than, in, as much or more than anybody. But I've got to let you know this. God has given you this equipment and power for the reason of going outside this church and reaching the lost for Jesus. Now I realize you can lose a congregation by preaching on this because most people don't want to win souls to God. They feel so introverted that they can't do anything and that's because you've received the lie of the devil and you've been deceived. You've been deceived if you believe that. 
I want you to understand you're greater in God than that. Yes. And God's greater than, in you than that. He has placed in you a power and an anointing yeah. dynamo so much greater than you are. And whenever you get to the place that you die out, Amen. I'm going to say something that's going to offend some of you. And I know it because some of you are going to take this the wrong way. But there's so many of you that's too fleshy. Amen. Amen. And I'm not talking about body. I'm talking about carnality. Yes. When you trim off the fleshiness, I'm talking about carnality. Yes. Yes. When you trim that off, I'm getting more straight here and I realize it. I feel, I feel the cutting edge coming down. When you get willing to let God cut on you and operate on you and trim some of that fat off of you, spiritual fat, you'll get in a place where you're willing really willing for God to do something with your life and not just coast along and bless me, bless the bless the bless. I want more than just bless, bless, bless. I want the Holy Ghost to shape me, stir me, melt me, mold me, and make me. Yeah. You don't make a difference. Until you're changed. Right. You've got to be changed. Man, glory, glory, glory. Moses said, if your presence, in Exodus 33 and 15, if your presence does not go with me, don't carry us up hence. Don't deliver us, carry us into the wilderness. If your presence doesn't go with us, Man. he said, I don't want to take a step right. if your presence is not with us. Oh, Jesus, help me. Exodus 33, 17. When you have faith with God, God will let you know of His presence and His secret plans. God said, the Lord said to Moses, I will do this thing also that you have asked, has spoken. For you have found favor in my sight and I know you by name. Yes. Yes. I know you by name, Moses. He was on a personal basis with God the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and God was with Moses. Moses knew that without God's presence, they couldn't survive in the wilderness. I want to tell you a secret. You like to hear secrets. Without God's presence, you cannot make it through this life. But with His presence, you can face any foe that comes against you. There is no giant. I don't care how big they are. If they're big as Goliath. If they're big as King Og. Doesn't matter how big and how tall and how mean that they are. God's bigger than they are. There's no comparison. God will go with you and be with you if you'll stay with Him. He's got to take you some places. He's going to take you into places you've never seen or known or realized was possible. The Lord. He's getting the crowd together to follow Him. Not follow me, to follow Him. Hallelujah. And when you follow Him, you'll be in step. Every step you take, you will step rank and file with Him. Mm -hmm. I, I wasn't in the service, but JB was. And how many was in the service? Any, any branch of service? <coughs> JB was the only one here. I'm in the Lord's Army. Yeah. The Lord's Air Force. Marines. Yes, you were in the service. 20 years. 20 years. What branch of the service? Air Force. Air Force. I was in God's Air Force. Now I am. God's Army. I was in the Army. Brother, Ar Brother Army. Brother Sparkman. I'm still in the Army. Still in the Army of the Lord. And in the Marines, no discharge. No discharge. Sometimes, and in the Navy, God's Navy, sometimes we're the first one to land on the enemy's territory to tell people about Jesus. You've got to be equipped to be ready at any moment, any time. God's raising you up. And the minute man calls is about to go forward. Yes. Rise up, O church of the living God. Rise up. You say, rise up, you mean the rapture? No, I mean get up. Amen. I mean get up Amen. and get ready to 
to go for Jesus. Because he's sending out a call to work for him. And you've got to be in his army, his Air Force, his Marines, his Navy, and his National Guard and everything else. Yeah. You've got to be in his unit. Yeah. And be willing to follow him. Submit yourself to the Lord. Yeah. Resist the devil and he'll feel it free from you. Yeah. Yeah. We've got a powerhouse. I look out over this congregation. I see more than just people. I see more than just Christians. I see a mighty powerhouse for God that's willing to stand up in the face of any adversity that the devil throws at you because you have such a mighty power of God in you and through you. You're not afraid to stand up to anything or anybody. Amen. Amen. To Jesus tarry. Did God help me know what to say and what not to say, Father? Give me wisdom by hearing discernment. Should Jesus tarry, the day will come when they will go through this land, they're already here. And this was not heard of just a few years ago. But they will go through this land of America cutting off people's heads. Yes. If you claim to be a Christian and will not convert to their religious right. philosophy. Amen. You say, well, preacher, where did you get your information? According to the scripture, there's a time coming when people will have to give their life for the cause of the gospel. Right. Yes. Amen. There's a time coming. You say, when is that time? It's upon us right now. Yes. Yes. Let me get in trouble here. Why does the federal government have box carloads of guillotines and shackles? Why? Our government, why do they have them? Right now. Who are those for? I know that I'll get in trouble probably. They may lock me up for saying this. But you will come see me, won't you? Don't worry about it, brother. Just come, come see me. Yeah. Well, I will let you know. How can they lock you up for telling the truth? That's right. That's right. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway. Let me tell you a song. I love this song. I'll stand for thee, dear Jesus, though death may come my way. I'll spread the gospel to the fallen hills. And if it be thy will, Lord, to go across the sea, help me be willing, Jesus, to say yes. yes. Any moment. Yes, amen. Every religious group could come in the doors of this church or the new church with Uzis and say, everyone who claims to be a Christian believes in Jesus, stand your feet. Perhaps they'll march you out and mow you down like grass. Yes. Right. You say, preacher, I don't, I don't know if that would be wisdom. If you don't, you deny the Lord Jesus Christ. That's right. He said, if you're ashamed of me on this earth, you'll be ashamed of me. I'll be ashamed of you before my Father which is in heaven. <clears throat> you say, you're scared, preacher. Are you willing to, are, can you handle the truth? Yes, May I tell you what is here upon us now? I'm not yes, pre amen. preaching about the by and by what's coming in the future. I'm telling you what's upon this earth in the United States of America now. Yes. This is a different message tonight. This is a message that God is calling recruits to step out and stand for Him. You say, well, preacher, since you put it that way, I don't know about that now. Changes when you 
have to give your life because of the gospel. Yes. It changes if you have to give your life like Jesus gave His life for us. And we have to give our life for Him. Galatians 2.20, and I'm closing. I've quoted this over and over and over hundreds of times. For me to live is Christ. For I am crucified with Christ. Really? Really? I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave Himself for me. Stand with me, please. My Father, this has been a unique move of Your Spirit, different and diverse from what we've had for the past several services, several weeks. Dear God, it's been a sobering service, a sobering message. Many things that You've put in my spirit that was not in the outline that was prepared to preach. But God, You would have me speak it forth to Your people to prepare. And Lord Jesus, every soul that we can win to You now, we must win them while there's still time. Every soul we can reach, we've got to reach them while there's still time. Oh God, there's millions of people that are dying and going to hell. There are millions of people, God, and we've got to reach some of those. We've got to reach them. Father, I have a special request for you. Dear God, I've got a special urgent request for you for these people. Would you please remind them of when they first accepted you as Savior and Lord? Would they were freshly first born again when they were freshly saved and when they were willing to do anything for you then Father I ask you in Jesus name roll back the memories and roll back the time to cause them to remember when they first got saved and first come to know you as Savior and Lord. Lord, remind them that you forgave them of every sin. They were on the downward road to hell. They were lost and undone. Remind them, God, of how you saved them and forgave them of every sin. And there was no sin remaining in their life. You forgave them. Remind them what they said in that altar. Lord Jesus, I'll do anything if you'll just save me. I'll do anything if you'll just wash all my sins away and forgive me. I'll do anything for you. I'll do anything. Remind them of those promises they made. That I'll do anything for you, Jesus. And now I'm calling everyone that will. Come to this altar to renew your promises you made to God. Renew those vows you made to God when you first got right of Him. When you first got saved, that you had come to these altars and renew those vows you made to God. You were willing to do anything, anything, anything for God. You just named it, Lord. I'll do anything. You forgive me. You saved me from all. Darkness, eternal punishment. 
He contacted her and let her know in no uncertain terms, those pastors, it, 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 it uh, came against their rights, their First Amendment rights, that they did not have to turn in their sermon outlines to her. They didn't have to bow to her. And she had to bow to her. I tell you, there's still some godly leadership in America. And I got a feeling there may be some more godly leadership coming up in America. Uh, in Jesus' name, praise God. Well, thank you for viewing us tonight in this service. God bless you, Jesus' name. Amen.